Hello and welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the gateways to the posterior scapular region and the contents that we find there. Um, so what we're basically talking about would be some openings by which we can get from the anterior scapular region to the posterior scapular region. Uh, and basically what is happening is we have some nerves that are coming off the brachial plexus, we have arteries that are coming off the axillary artery, and we want to get to the back, to the posterior scapular region, so that we can innervate the muscles that are found behind there and also supply the blood that is necessary uh, for them to function. So that's what we're going to talk about. Let's get right into it. The first one that we're going to talk about is called the suprascapular foramen. And anytime we say foramen, we're talking about an opening. And what we have here, this is, this is a picture of the anterior, it's an anterior view of the scapula. And what we have here, we see this little notch that we call the scapular notch. All right, you can see it here. Uh, from the posterior view, you can see it here also. So we have that notch. And what we have is traversing that notch, going across from one end to the next, we have a ligament that we call the transverse scapular ligament. So let's draw that in right here. All right, that is the first gateway that we have to get to the posterior scapular region, and that is called the, supra, the suprascapular foramen. So this opening that we have right here, that we have right there, that is what we're referring to. Now, in terms of the contents of that foramen, the contents that we have, well, one particular thing would be the suprascapular nerve. All right, so we have the suprascapular nerve, let's do that in red, that's basically coming through that foramen to get to the posterior scapular region. And what is interesting is we have a suprascapular nerve and we have a, suprascap a suprascapular artery. And what we find is that the nerve goes through that foramen, it goes under the transverse scapular ligament, in other words, and the artery goes above. So let's do that in blue. I should have switched the colors, but um, we have the artery that's going above that ligament. And an easy way to remember that is the army goes over the bridge, the navy goes under the bridge. So the artery goes over the transverse scapular ligament, and the the nerve goes under the transverse scapular ligament. So that's the first gateway, the suprascapular foramen that has the uh, suprascapular nerve going through that foramen under the transverse scapular ligament and the suprascapular artery that goes over or superior to that transverse scapular ligament. Then we have three other gateways that are made up of similar structures. All right, and you can see them right here. We have the, I'm going to write it over here, the quadrangular space. So quadrangular space. And then we have the triangular space and the triangular interval. And there's a very uh, easy way of you know going over this so that you can remember it. What I do when I'm when I st when I studied this, this is how I remembered it. Uh, I took my index finger and my my middle finger of both hands. So. Let's say uh, I'm, I'm taking my right hand and I'm going to put my, my index finger right here and my middle finger right here. And you can just do that. Put it in front of you right now. You'll see. Uh, it's kind of like you're putting up a peace sign, um, but on the side. And then on your left side, you're going to take your left middle finger and put it here. And your left index finger and put it here. All right, and those fingers all represent 
certain structures. Okay, so your right middle finger is going to represent teres minor, which is what we're seeing here. Your right index finger is teres major. Your left middle finger is going to be the humerus. And your left index finger is going to be the long head of the triceps. So when we look at these different spaces, we can easily see what the borders are. So the quadrangular space is right here, and it makes sense because it has four sides, so we call it the quadrangular space. And when I look at the borders, the superior border is going to be teres minor, the inferior border is teres major, the medial border is going to be the long head of the triceps, and the lateral border is going to be the neck of the humerus. All right, so you can take your fingers, put them in this uh, arrangement, and then you can kind of quiz yourself and go over and over, and you'll get it really clearly. And then when we look at the triangular space, we can see here, this is the tri triangular space. The borders of the triangular space are the superior border would be teres minor, inferior border is teres major, and the, me the lateral border is the long head of the triceps. And then the triangular interval, you can see that right here. Uh, this is going to be a little different. Uh, the superior border is the teres ma major muscle. The medial border is the long head of the triceps. And the lateral border, it looks as if it's the muscle, but it's actually the shaft of the humerus. All right, so we have quadrangular space, triangular space, and triangular interval. Now for the contents of those gateways. For the quadrangular space, the two things that we have um, going through that space is number one, the posterior humeral circumflex artery. So I'm just going to write P-H-C. Uh, that's not an official abbreviation, but the posterior humeral circumflex artery coming off of the axillary artery, um, basically coming around and going through that opening. All right, so that's the posterior humeral circumflex artery. And also we have the axillary nerve that's coming through there. And it's coming through there to then innervate deltoid, the deltoid muscle and uh, teres minor and so on. But for right now, all you need to know is in the or coming through the quadrangular space, we have the posterior humeral circumflex artery and the axillary nerve. Then we only have one structure, one thing that's coming through the triangular space, and that is the circumflex scapular artery. So the circumflex scapular artery is coming through that triangular space. And then lastly, through the, quad the triangular interval, which is down here, we have two things. Uh, we have the radial nerve, and the deep brachial artery. Radial nerve and deep brachial artery. So once again, through the, tri the quadrangular space, which is right here, uh, we have the posterior humeral circumflex artery. So that's P-H-C. And then we also have the axillary nerve. Coming through the triangular space, we have the circumflex scapular artery and then through the triangular interval we have the radial nerve and the deep brachial artery all right so let's quiz ourselves really quick as usual you can turn down the uh, volume and kind of follow along with me um, so the name of the gateway would be the suprascapular foramen, which is right here. The ligament would be the transverse scapular ligament that extends across. Under the li ligament, we have the suprascapular nerve. And above or over the ligament, we have the suprascapular artery. Then moving on, here we have the quadrangular space. The, con the borders would be the superior border is teres minor, inferior border is teres major, 
medial border is long head of the triceps and lateral border would be the neck of the humerus. The contents would be posterior humeral circumflex artery and axillary nerve. Then here we have the triangular space. The boundaries would be, or the borders would be, the superior border is teres minor, inferior border, teres major, and lateral border is going to be the long head of the triceps. The contents would only be the circumflex scapular artery. Then we have the triangular interval. The borders, superior border would be teres major, lateral border would be the shaft of the humerus, and the medial border would be the long head of the triceps. The contents would be the radial nerve and the deep brachial artery. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to like the video. Just click the like button that's right below. And you can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button above if you're on YouTube. But more importantly, make sure to come back to the website at interactive-biology.com for more biology videos and other resources to help make biology fun. This is Leslie Samuel. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.